21.5 Biology. It's flatworms and roundworms. All right, so this is a good little section to take notes on, actually. Um, if you wanted to go back and do annelids, dash segmented worms, and put earthworms on there, earthworms, leeches, sea worms. So you have that in there. And then 21.5 would be flatworms and roundworms. So under flatworms, you've got flukes, tapeworms, and planarians. Flukes, tapeworms, and planarians. Um, and they are platyhelminths, all right? And you definitely want to know all of that together there. Platyhelminths um, are called flatworms. And they have a flattened kind of body, hence the name flatworms. There are two classes of parasitic flatworms, and that would be flukes and tapeworms. And... Um, then a non-parasitic one would be planarians there. And they're quite common, found in um, all kinds of aquatic environments. Some of them are terrestrial. There's about 20,000 different species of these suckers. And um, the planarians are free-living flatworms. They're like scavengers in ponds, streams, lakes, that kind of thing. Um, you can read that. They have um, eye spots, two light sensitive eye spots. That's kind of, they just see um, the, like shadows and light, that kind of thing. Sometimes they have a nickname of the cross eyed worm, and you can kind of see why on the bottom of 441. Um, one of the really cool things about planarians is if you look on the top of page 442, you'll see why. They're really cool. Um, you can get them, you know. You can chop them into pieces and they will continue growing. So if you take one of them and you chop it into, let's say, three fragments, each fragment becomes a new worm, um, a type of asexual reproduction, obviously. And um, if you cut the head in, like, split it, like, here's the head, and you cut the head like that down the middle, it'll form two heads. Um, so that's kind of cool. You can see how that works on page 442. You could probably look up videos on that one. Um, most planarians, they will normally produce sexually. However, um, they can also reproduce like that as well. So both ways there. Um, then you have flukes. That's a type of, um, of, oh, good grief. What am I talking about? Um, platyhelminths or flatworms. And um, the flukes, they will spend most of their life in a person or um, an animal. Um, and um, a lot of them are just like feeding on the liver. They might go into lungs, intestines, blood of man. They're, um, they have a lot of, they cause a lot of issues and problems there. They're robbing the nutrients of that host there. Um, the life cycle of a fluke is really complicated. Um, it has to have, it's like alternation of generations, but it has to have two different hosts. And um, you can read a little bit about that on page 443. And then you have a tapeworm. Look at the, the microscopic view there, it blows it up there, um, figure 21.30, on the bottom of page 443. And they have a head called a scolex. It's equipped with little hooks or suckers that kind of... Um, permit the tapeworm to attach itself to the host's intestines. And they don't really have a mouth, they just, or really a digestive system. They just simply absorb the nutrients that they need from the intestines. So um, you've heard of a tapeworm um, before um, in a human or especially in animals, dogs, cats, that kind of thing. Um, it talks about their type of reproduction as well. All right, so that's flatworms. Remember I said um, flukes, tapeworms, and um, planarians there, flatworms. All right, now we talk, go into nematodes. The others were platyhelminths. These are nematodes, and these are roundworms. All right, so this is like Roman numeral three if you were taking notes that way. Roundworms, they belong to nematoda, and it means threadworm. There's about 20,000 species of those, and um, they're really abundant in the soil, they do live as parasites in plants and animals, but some are free living. Um, that means they don't have to have a host. When I say the word free, the terms free living, it means they don't have to necessarily have a host. Um, some um, of them are microscopic. Some of them can grow up to about um, two, three, four inches, something like that. There are four parasitic roundworms: Filaria, and you want you want to put this like little A, B, C, and D, or one, two, three, four, however you're doing it. 
filaria, hookworm, trichnia, those are the three, no, that's only, that's three. Oh, and ascaris, ascaris worm. So, um, filaria, hookworm, trichnia, and ascaris worm. Those are all on the top of page 444 in the first paragraph there. Those are the four types of parasitic roundworms. And they have a rounder shaped body there, and that, hence why they're called roundworms. The filaria worm, it blocks the lymph vessels. It'll get inside and it'll produce a very um, serious condition in the lymphatic system called an elephantitis, yeah, um, or tiasis, tiasis there. Elephantiasis, that's a weird um, thing to have. It causes tremendous swelling in the legs, the other extremities, and um, it's more third world country, even Asia, not, not always third world countries, Asia, Africa, the islands, South America, some warmer areas, I guess. Um, they also are considered heartworms. They live in the heart of dogs and cats, and they can be fatal to the animals. So, um, filaria worms larvae are transmitted to their host by, like, mosquitoes or something like that, that, um, they might bite something that has that, and then they can transmit it to another animal. Um, hookworms. Hookworms are a parasitic roundworm, and, um, their larvae burrows through the skin, often um, the feet of the host, and if they go barefooted or whatever, travels through the bloodstream. Um, yeah, you guys are like, ooh, I'm never going barefoot out there again. All right, all right. Um, normally, stomach acid destroys organisms that are swallowed, but if it goes through the bloodstream like that, then obviously that doesn't have the protection there. Um, hookworms can be controlled by observing good sanitary practices and disposable disposal of human feces and wearing shoes. Interesting, huh? I think hopefully you guys can handle that. But in third world countries, if you think of that, some of the people, like they don't have toilets and commodes and all that, so they just go and dig a hole if they're lucky. And then people run around and they step in it and that's how people end up sick with it. Um, so yeah, wear those shoes. Um, trichnia worms, these are parasitic roundworms as well. They call, they cause trichinosis and, um, humans can become infected with trichnia worms by eating poorly cooked pork. Okay. So poorly cooked pork, that's one of the reasons it's really good to make sure that your pork is cooked really well. Um, let's see, I wanted to tell you about this part. One infection can result in half a billion larvae simultaneously boring into the body, causing pain, fever, anemia, weakness, and swelling. The larvae bore their way into the muscle tissue where they form cysts, and they remain dormant for years, and then the worms move into the muscles and form cysts there, and there's no way to remove them. So the best way to prevent that is to cook your pork thoroughly. And then there's the Ascaris worm, and um, I'm going to let you read about that. They lay about 200,000 eggs each day. Um, and so those are the, the, the four different types of parasitic roundworms that you want to look out for. All right, we'll do um, 21.5. Hey, we are almost to the end of this chapter. Um, so we'll do 21.6 to finish it off. And then that'll take us into spring break.